As you can see, we're wrapping up another Wayne Scott project here. We finished the judges panel. I'll have some finished video on that when we go back and do a wrap up video with the furniture and everything. But this is a new one. This is in a baby nursery for a newborn baby that's going to be coming soon. And you know, it's a rugged life. We spend most of our time in baby nurseries and the dining rooms of suburban housewives. But I wanted to take an opportunity and make a video that we don't usually make and that'll be me spraying this new baby nursery. And I'll show you the reason we don't make these kind of videos. It's because we have to use this little guy right here. So the reason we record on these is because we don't want to bring our good camera into a room and get it covered with overspray. Because that camera, let me show you. This one here is like a about a $4,000 setup on the gimbal with the camera, the lens, and the microphone. And actually the card is like $400 too, the memory card. It's a new technology, XQD or something, but it's like 250 gigabytes. All that to say, anything that ends up in this room ends up looking like the sprayer eventually with all this overspray on it. And that is not how we wanna handle this camera. So we'll switch over to the GoPro and I'll show you guys my setup and how I'm gonna spray this. We're gonna put our five gallon strainer, the whole thing, probably not gonna use the whole thing on this project, but I always dump the whole gallon because as these things settle, they kind of separate and you don't really get all the pigments and all the sheen that you need if you only dump a little bit in. You'd only get that if you kind of, you know, mix it all up before you dumped it in. But this is just what I do. And I actually mix it up in here too. And what I generally do is I just leave the bucket on here, just like that. I can just mix it up. It's already been sanded, primed, sanded again, uh, dusted, vacuumed, all that good stuff. So now we're ready to put the top coat on. And I'm gonna spray this in a vertical pattern. Just going from top to bottom, bottom to top. And I'll just handle each section as kind of its own little project as I go. So like I'll start with this wall right here, go to this next little piece, and then take on this right here. That's just how my mind thinks of it. All right, here we go. 208 tip. So here's what that fan looks like. Um, show you right here. It's uh, about four inches, four to six inches, depending on how far away from the uh, surface you hold it. As I get further away, the fan gets wider, but I usually hold it like a foot away or so. I don't know, I don't really, Honestly, I don't really know what I'm doing. It's, it's such a funny thing to say. But it's more of just like a feeling. Like, what pressure do you have it at? Honestly, it's just all the way up. It's because it, it, it's how I feel like the gun should be. So, I don't really know all the technicalities of what I'm doing. I just know that I've made every mistake in the book to arrive at this point to know not what not to do. So, if, if that means anything. So here we go, I'm going to hit this top first. You know, I'll just kind of treat this as one section, like I mentioned. I'm going to start right here with this edge. I know that I know that might may, may be kind of useless because I'm spraying white on white. But at least you get to see kind of the motions and how I go about doing it. So again we'll start here. One thing you want to keep in mind too when you're spraying, is if you pass the same location twice, like I go like this, and then for some 
reason I go back over it, more than likely on a slick surface like this bin primer, that's probably going to sag, run or drip, whatever you want to call it, but the paint's not going to hang up there, and it's going to cause a problem, a big problem. So we have to wait for things to dry, sand them down, and then respray it again, which is just killing and killing your time. You just got to have to wait. So making these mistakes, if you can learn the hard way, you'll never forget, but if you can learn from me, even better, because I've done that a lot. Like I, I said one time, Hey, I'm going to just lay this on here so thick, it's going to be such a smooth, gelled out finish. No, it just, just all drips. So you got to find that sweet spot where you can pass everything, cover everything, be quick about it, and don't pass the same areas twice. <coughs> so we'll handle this bigger section first. Just looking for coverage right now. It's kind of looking against the reflection of the natural light, which you're definitely not going to see on that GoPro. But I'm just looking at just to see if I have uniform coverage. You may have noticed I missed this spot right here, this bottom rail, and I just kind of attacked it like this because I know I can come back and hit this up on its own. So moving on to this larger wall right here, the largest wall of the project, one thing I'll mention is you'll never see me stop in the middle of a section. The only time you'd see that actually is if I need to clear out an unclog, which is when some debris gets into the tip, you just reverse the tip, pull the trigger, blows it out, and then reverse it back. That, that'd be the only time I would stop in a big panel like this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this one up and just you guys can just watch and take it easy. how I walked on my knees right there just to avoid stopping and to keep a consistent flow so I do that a lot in here it's carpet I don't need to wear knee pads but generally when I spray I do wear knee pads so I can just walk like this if I was going to get this section here it's just more comfortable where you don't have to be like you know you could easily do that but just preference here so you guys may have noticed too, when I spray these sections, I hit the top first like this. That's because anytime you spray, you always want to hit your, kind of your small edges first, like this, up against that casing. Because if you come back and hit those, like say I spray all this, you know, this section here, and then I cross that right there, it might leave some inconsistency with the overspray that lands on what's already sprayed, if that makes sense. If you've ever seen that, or if you ever experience that, it's generally because you're not spraying your small sections first and then coming back and making the big sections uniform.
All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and handle this window casing. These are a little tricky, because what you're gonna have to do, you'll usually have your, your runs here where these miters are, or at least that's what I've experienced. Because what I would do is I would go spray here, pass over, and then spray this way. The problem with that is you're passing this section twice, and it's going to run, like I was talking about earlier. So what you have to do, you have to find that kind of motion where you can turn your hand, turn your hand, and then get into weird positions. You ever see people who spray really good? They're always in a lot of weird positions because they know that if they just kind of be like a robot, they're going to have where the paint's going to run on them. So this is what I'm talking about. And then the same thing on the jam here. And then when it comes to the uh, stool right here, or sill, however you prefer to call it, then you can just hit that up. And if you have to pass somewhere twice, it's better to do it on a surface that's you know, horizontal surfaces like this that are vertical, it's really going to, you have gravity working against you. And I realize this video quality is probably not the best with this backlit surface coming in through the window, but it's better than nothing. So we're going to continue on here. So what I'll do now, I'll hit up this section and I'll just connect the two that I already did over there. And Generally, you want to move pretty quick because I don't want that to dry up over there and then not be able to, I don't know what the word is, but join together properly. I'm not sure, but if you spray a section and it dries and you come back and like hit it with wet paint, you can kind of see a seam where they weren't drying at the same time. And just for good measure, I'm going to hit this again. Because it is a horizontal surface, I just don't want any of that little overspray to kind of make that sheen inconsistent right there. So our last little section here, go ahead and hit this up. And then we're done. And you can see how I'm looking at the GoPro right now and it's at 15 minutes. So if I wasn't talking to you guys, I could have this thing sprayed in five to ten minutes and the reason I bring that up is because a lot of people say like why even spray you know just brush it I mean there's a whole list of reasons why we don't brush it but it doesn't take that long at all obviously setting up and everything takes long but the actual work of spraying is like ten minutes <clears throat> so we'll hit our edges And then generally, you can see my new gun is already looking old, but anytime I'm done, I just push that little that trigger guard down. Because one time I've stepped on this trigger and the guard wasn't on and it shot paint and <laughs> it was pretty bad. Not only that, if you get injected with paint, you can actually die. So there's a lot of pressure here. And if the tip is spun around, like on the unclog feature, it's a stream, like a pressure washer. If it gets in your bloodstream, it can actually kill you. It's very toxic. And especially if you're using like an exotic coating, like a lacquer or something. 
it can be bad. So I always put that down. And then now <clears throat> we pretty much play the waiting game. We just kind of wait, see what we need to do, see if there's any corrections. And I leave the sprayer, I don't clean it until the paint is completely dry. Because if I need to fix something, obviously I don't want to have to like, you know, get the sprayer back out and re-clean it again. I'm just wasting time and paint thinner, cost money. So I just wait till everything is completely dry. To see that we have a uniform finish and then we can clean up the sprayer tear our plastic down but that's essentially it pretty pretty easy spraying here so yeah let me know if you guys have any questions about this whole process i'm not an expert but i know enough to get by and generally in life it's kind of all you need so we'll see you guys on the next video